So how excited are you to go back to Martinsville this weekend? Always, Shannon. Always excited to go back to Martinsville. It's uh, it's the track where I saw my first ever NASCAR Cup Series race. You know, as a young kid growing up in Vermont, as a teenager, we used to come down for the old uh, Cardinal and Dogwood 500s with 250 laps for the late models and 250 laps for the modified. So, yeah, Martinsville is deep in my system for sure. What year was that? <laughs> er, let's just say a long time ago. Early. Let's go with early 80s and just leave okay. it alone, shall we? Early 80s. Early All 80s. All right, Dave. It is about to get real in the NASCAR playoffs. Just eight drivers are left standing. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick. Okay, they've got a significant points lead, right? They've got 40 and 39 points. But we saw a lot of movement in the points in the previous round. How much security do you think they really have? They have the security that they had in the last round. They have the ability to go out and have a mediocre race and get get away with it. They have the ability to go out and have a lousy race and maybe get away with it. But they can't have two mediocres or they're going to be in the same kind of position that Martin Truex found himself in in Kansas, where he had to race his tail off to survive and regain that bonus point advantage that he once again enjoys this week. Yeah, certainly. A lot of people watching that 78 team and how those points fluctuated. How much more aggressive do you anticipate things are going to get in this round of eight? I'm not sure it can. I mean, it, it, it's just been it, it's been top of the heap aggressive. The, the stress factor is sky high. We've already got people out that we expected to go all the way to Homestead. You know, Brad Keselowski's out. Kyle Larson is out. Nobody expected that. So, you know, who could be next? And I guarantee there are a lot of guys right now, drivers and crew chiefs alike, that are laying awake at night saying, man, I don't want to be that guy in three weeks. Yeah, one of the reasons that those two guys are out is because the last two races have been won by drivers that were below the cutoff line, Chase Elliott and Eric Almarola. Do you think that trend's going to continue? It certainly can. And and not only below the cutoff line, but drivers outside the current uh, still mm, alive playoff group. Because the more people we eliminate from these playoffs, Shannon, the better teams that we have outside that list that are still capable of winning. So, yeah, especially at Martinsville. Martinsville's been a wild card from day one, and I can't see any reason why it won't be again. Yes, we know Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, two guys that are still looking for a victory this season. All right, it's been a wild while since one of the big three made his way to victory lane. Adam, Drew, and Bobby, they're going to get ready to discuss their level of concern for those guys. How concerned are you for Truex, Harvick, or Bush? Well, I'll tackle Kevin Harvick because that's the easy one. I'm not worried about them at all. They continue to show impressive speed, top of the list speed every single week. They're making way too many mistakes, but they have the speed to overcome them. Kyle Busch does not have quite as much speed as he had earlier in the year, so I think there's some level of concern there, and I think there's a larger level of concern for the 78 team, particularly since Martin Truex himself said this week that they are not where they want to be right now, and they need to get back to running the way they ran maybe a month and a half or two months ago. So this uh, answer might be obvious, but which of the big three do you think gets to victory lane first? Uh, well, whether he gets to victory lane or not, I don't know. But my pick still is Kevin Harvick. I, I will take speed over luck every single time. You'd like to have both, uh, but if you can only have one, I'd rather be fast than lucky because luck will turn on you. Speed sticks around.